I started to preach the, the word of God since the 27 years ago. And today it's difficult for me, you know why? Because this is the first time I preached directly in English for a meeting. So uh, uh, I hope through the word of God today you will recognize the voice of the chapel. You know? Amen. Jesus said, the sheep follow me and they recognize my voice. And uh, I want this morning, you will recognize also the, the voice of Jesus. Amen. The Lord put one word upon my heart for you. And this is a blessing and a pleasure for me. I want to, to thank my brother Michael to let, uh, to let the place. You know, if we, if we come to this country, it, it, it is not because we, we think we are, we are better than the other people, but it is just to share our help. We want to help the people, and we believe the Lord is able to use us. So, in this morning, the Lord put one word upon my heart, and I, I believe if, you, if we can understand this morning what God wants for us, it will be maybe a, 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 I think a, a solution for many problems. So I will read with you the Bible. in the Bible a story, just a few verses in the book of John. If you want to read with me, we can open the Bible and we will read the book of John, uh, chapter 11 and verse 20, uh, 32. Chapter 11 and verse. This is the story of Lazarus and uh, the Lord put one word and I believe truly in my heart it will be a blessing for you and for me today. So we read together. <clears throat> then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the, the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? <clears throat> they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again growing in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time here is a stench for for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, and at the end, it is written, No, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth, and he who had died came out bound and hand and foot with grave clothes. So the Lord put this word in, uh, in my heart today for, for us. Amen. We are a family in this story, a Christian family. And uh, at the beginning of the story, this Christian family was in, in distress, in sadness, in pain, with a lot of suffering, with cry, tears, mourning, sorrows. I, I write, South, they are Christian, Christ disciple. And you know sometimes, this is the same in our life. We are Christian, but sometimes the, the life is very, very difficult for many of them. We have distress, we live in pain and suffering. We go to the church. We love Jesus. We, we, we read the Bible. We try to, to do what we can. But uh, when, we, uh, 
when we see our life, we can see these things like this family, pain, suffering, cry, tears, mourning. And I write also, but whoever, whoever, Jesus is here. There's sometimes a, it could be a trouble for us. We cannot understand why Jesus is with us. The pastors told us uh, Jesus is able to do everything. He is the Almighty God. So why in my life it's so difficult? Why the trouble in my life? Why so much pain, so much suffering? And in this story, when we we finish uh, to, 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 to read at the end, everything is changed. Because Jesus was there and he did the miracle. He, uh, Lazarus uh, uh, rose again from the dead. You know, you know the story. I, I believe that. Yes, of course. But I want you and me realize something this morning. At the end of the story, we can see the same family. After the miracle of Jesus, we can see joy, happiness, smile, gladness, glory, comfort, consolation. This is completely different. You know why? Yes, you know, because Jesus did the miracle. But the question this morning, between the two situations, the two situations, the sadness, the, the tears, the suffering, and the joy, the peace, the life, instead the death, between the, the, the two realities, they are just one stone. They are just, there is just, sorry, one stone. Between the two situations, I, I write just a stone, a rock, which must to take away, to be rolled, to be removed. It could be, and very often, this is the reason of the no benediction. The reason for the sky is closed above our head. It is written in the Bible, the Deuteronomy, the Deuteronomy 28 and verse 23, the sky could be closed above our head. It doesn't mean no benediction, no answer from God. Sometimes the, the sky is like the bronze, like the iron, and we cry to the Lord. We ask Him to do some things and no answer, and we must, we must to, to ask to the Lord, but why? We are Christian, like the, 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 the sister of the story. We love you, we believe you are here with us. Always until the end of the days. But why our situation not change? Why, my Lord? Sometimes I want to tell you that. We have a stone, like in this story, between, between the benediction and the no benediction, between the blessing and the no blessing, between the, the, the no answer and the blessing of God. And I want to talk. I want to, to talk with you this, this afternoon about uh, different kind of stone we can have in our life. You know, a meeting, this is not a, a tribunal, this is not a judgment. We don't come there to be judged, but sometimes it's good to examine ourselves. Yes, it's good. It's good to, to, uh, to ask the question, why? Sometimes we listen to the brothers and sisters share a testimony and we are blessed in our, in, our, in, in our mind, in our heart. And sometimes also we ask the question in ourselves, why Lord do you do that for my sister or my brother? And why you don't do that for me? This is the question. Maybe sometimes it's possible to have a, a stone like in this story between the answer of God and between the no blessing. So I reckon what kind of stone should we be rolled? Should we remove in our life? This is a good question. 
But then you say, a good question. Why I don't see the glory of the Lord upon my life? Why the Lord don't uh, answer to my to 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 my desire what I I ask to Him? Why, my Lord? This is a good question. And uh, the first the first uh, uh, stone. This is an example, you know. The first stone we must we must remove. We must take away. And I think this is uh, the most important uh, stone. I want to read with you the Bible. We will read together. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 1, we can read together. We will ask the Bible, O oh Lord, why the sky is like the bronze, like the, the iron upon my life? One, uh, why I, I have no answer when I cry to you? Why, my Lord? What kind of, of, of stone can I have in my life? And it is written. I know this, this verse, I will read with you now. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 1. I know this verse very often are used in the, in the gospel meeting. Yes, I, I, I listen many times. Michael also and the other brothers use this verse to evangelize. And it is good. We can, we can use this verse. But you know, firstly, this verse, don't talk to the unbelievers people but talk to the people of God. And we must understand, it is written, I will read with you and for you. Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, nor is he heavy, that he, he cannot hear, but we must understand, this is uh, this is good for the unbelievers, but this is true also for us. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden His face from you. Very important. Verse, uh, verse 3. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. No one calls from justice, no does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive heaven and bring forth iniquity. Their works are works of iniquity and the act of violence is in their hand. We want to understand that. You know, I believe it is very important to to, to understand the sin is the, the enemy of God and if we won't practice the sin it could be not possible the Bible says we know God is able to give us the answer he is able to 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 to, to listen to him when we cry to him but your iniquities have separated you from God and this is, all, uh, this is also a lot for the Christian. It's true, my God. Yes, a lot. And sometimes, you know, we say we're a Christian. We go to the meeting. This is good to go to the meeting. We must be together. This is the will of God. But we must understand also. We must to, to do what we can to live. To live the war of God. Amen. To listen, this is good. But to live, this is better. And sometimes, this is the reality, the sin, the iniquities, the disobedience are in our life. I write the sin we want to keep, we want to hide, we want to live secretly. And it's not possible because the sin is like a barrier, an obstruction, an back between the, the, the blessing of God and the non-blessing. And what we can do, so, we can firstly recognize, you know, to be honest, to say to the Lord, oh Lord, this is the truth. I live in the sin. Yes, of course, we are not perfect, and we will never be perfect. But you know, it is a big difference to be perfect and to live in the sin. Yes, I'm not perfect. The Apostle Paul was no prophet, no, no, no me, I know that. But now, 
I'm not a sinner among the sinners. I'm a Christian. I'm a born again people. I receive the nature of God. God lives in my heart. I must to live now in, in, in the holiness. You know? It, 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 it must to be normal to live in the holiness way. We must to take a decision. We must firstly to recognize if we live in the sin. We, we must to stop to hide the sin, to keep, to want to keep the sin in our life. We must to recognize. We must to confess to God. We must to repent and we must to forsake. And if we do that, it is possible this morning. You know, sometimes we are like this family in the sorrow, in pain, in trouble, and we want to see the glory of the Lord. And we cry to him, do something for me. But he, he gave us this answer, my son, I love you so much. My, my daughter, I love you so much, but I can't do something for you because your sin, your iniquities. So this, this morning, you must to confess, you must to recognize, you must to repent, and you must to forsake the sins. You know that this is very important. If we want to see the glory of the Lord, we must remove the, the storm of the sin. I have written also, very important, I believe. Be careful. The worst storm which is able to, to, to close the heaven, this is the close of the sin. The wage of the sin is the death for the unbelievers. But this is also the death for the believers. And we must recognize, I, I don't think this word is for everybody, but sometimes it's possible. We want to keep something. We know this is a disobedience for God. But Lord ask you today and ask me if you have sin in your life. You must recognize, you must confess, and you must to, come, to forsake the sins at the feet of Jesus, at the feet of the cross, uh, today, we believe it. I want just to continue with you. I want to share with you an example, a testimony. I have a friend in France, he was my trainee, now he is a pastor, but when he gave his life to Jesus, at the beginning of the, uh, his Christian life, he came to the convention in France, the big convention. And uh, every night we have uh, made uh, several meetings under the big tent and also under the little tents around the big tents. We have many tents everywhere. And uh, this, uh, this man, uh, he, he went under the, the little tents because he wanted to, uh, listen to me, he wanted to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. He was a, a young Christian. He wanted he want to receive the blessing of God. He wanted to receive everything from God, of God. So, uh, this uh, young man uh, went under the, the little tent and he, he, he cried to the Lord, Oh Lord, bless me. I want to receive the blessing. I need the Holy Spirit in my life to, 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 to testify for the glory of the name. And he came every night to the meeting. And he was very humble. He, he bowed, he did bow his knee before the Lord upon the ground. In front of all, he was full with humility and he cried to the Lord, Oh Lord, bless me, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I, I remember the elder, the pastor, came unto him, they laid their hand upon him, they prayed for him, because they, they believed the Lord will be able to bless his, his life. And a lot of people around me, around him, was baptized in the Holy Spirit, but no. And when he was upon the ground, he told, he said to the Lord, Oh my Lord, why? Why you, 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 you don't want to bless my life? I believe in you, you saved my life. I belong to you, why? And you know, you know what the Lord answered to him? He answered to him, he was a, a new Christian. The Lord said to him, his name is Danny, Danny. The Lord said, Danny. You have in your van one thing. It was a generator for electricity. You have in your van a generator, and this is a problem for me. I will tell, I will tell you uh, why. It's not a problem because the generator is in the van. But for him, it was a problem because this generator was was stolen. Yes, someone uh, have, have steal this generator and give to Danny. 
And the Lord said to him, you have the generator in your hand. I don't like this. And when he was upon the ground, he said to the Lord, okay, Lord, I will give the generator for, for, to, to somebody. And the Lord said, no, I don't want you to give this generator to somebody. I want you to destroy it. And if you do that, I will bless you. And when he was upon the ground, he took the decision and he said to the Lord, okay, Lord, I accept. I promise you, when I will go out of the tent, I will destroy this generator and put it in the bin. I promise you. And when he says that, the, the sky was open uh, upon his life, he received the, the, the baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was for him a stone, like a stone. You know, we must remove sometimes to take a decision. Amen. And maybe, maybe you, you, you will laugh. Just, just uh, beside him, in this time where, when he took the decision and when he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, it was a young, a young girl. She did love the Lord also. She want also receive the, the, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And she, 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 she wept, she cried to the Lord, bless my love, bless my love. And he, he told me, I turn my, my head to her, I, I, I look at her, and she had, maybe it's very strange, she had a piercing in, his, in her nose. A piercing in, in her nose. And this young girl uh, did that. She take off the piercing and she, she cast out the, the piercing upon the ground. And when she did that, she was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yes, it was uh, uh, amazing, incredible. Maybe, I, I believe, so, so maybe you can say in your self, it's not important. Yes, I believe that. But you know, sometimes the stone are not the same for everyone. We can have a stone in our life. For us, this is like a barrier, like an obstruction. And we must take a decision if we want to see the glory of the Lord. I will continue just a few times. I want to find a solution. I want our life can change. I, I believe it, this is not the will of God that we, we, have, uh, we are just Christian, we are just saved. But I believe the Lord he, he came into this world to give us the life, but the life abundantly. I believe that. It's not normal to be all the time in the suffering, in pain. The Lord want, want to, to, to show us His glory. I believe that. And we must remove the, 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 the stone of the sin of iniquities. We must take a decision for the Lord. We can win if you want. We can accept. We must accept and see in our life, in our heart. We, we must to be honest and, and humble ourselves. We can read also if you want. Isaiah chapter 58 we will read together and verse 1 you know in this uh, chapter Isaiah 58 there's a little word just two letters the word if if I and F and I want to tell you the, uh, this thing these little words can change everything just a little word two letters I and F, if, I will read for you. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet, said the Lord, to the prophet for the people of God. Tell my people their transgression. It's very important. We will continue together. Verse 6. The Lord asked to his people, he asked them, you must to lose, to lose the bonds of wicked, wickedness, to handle the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? and that you bring to 
you house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself very very important i continue another verse verse 9 if the little one just two letters if you take away the yoke from your midst the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul if 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 it is written then then if then the storm is removed then your light shall down in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday midday the lord will guide you continually satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your, bo your bones you shall be like a watery garden what a blessing and like a spring of water you me whose waters do not fall those from among you shall but the old west place i can continue just a, a few words you shall raise up the foundation of many generations I, I, I prefer this uh, this uh, translation. You shall raise up the age for foundation. Those from among you shall perpetual ruins will be rebuilt. What a blessing for our family around us. You shall raise up the foundation of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the bridge. The restorer of streets to dwell in. This is very important to realize. To realize this reality of the Bible. The Bible says it's a bell. We have many, many stones in our life, like in this story. And the, the Bible says, the Lord said, if you take away, if you take away, then your light shall shall down. Sometimes we won't. The situation changed, but we will not take a decision. And I want to show you another testimony. I want to, to try to be uh, to be serious, and I will not preach too long, but I want to tell you this story. This is a story of a pastor, a black pastor from England. He loved the Lord, he worked for the Lord with his family, and one day the problem came. He had, he had a son, a good son. He was about 17 years old and he loved his son very much. The testimony said the son was a very good guy, very serious. He was the best at school. He obeyed all the time to his father. He was a Christian. He loved the law. And one day, this young boy uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with his friends they, they went to a, a Christian concert to, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to worship the Lord. And when they came back from this concert, the bad guy uh, met him and started to, to, uh, to have a struggle with him. And uh, this bad guy, they, they, they did beat him, but very, uh, very strong. And it was so, so important that the young guy uh, uh, was uh, almost, uh, almost dead, almost dead. It was a, a tragedy in this family. The young boy, the young Christian boy of this pastor uh, uh, was in the hospital. He was in the coma. He can just move two fingers. He was like this. And uh, he will, he will die. And the father, the pastor, was so, so hungry in himself. He, he, he said to the Lord, Oh Lord, why? He's my son, he's a good guy, he's a Christian, he's a believer, he, 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 he wants to please you. Why? Why will he do this, this things now? He, he couldn't understand why. And his life changed. The testimony, the story, um, the sufferings of this father uh, during a long time, many, many, many weeks. And when the 
young boy was in the hospital, the, 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 the pastor uh, uh, didn't want to go back anymore to the hospital. It was too, too, too hard for him. And he began, he began to change in his family, in the church. He was very tough with the Christian, very hard with the Christian. He started to, to beat his, uh, his wife. He, he, the, the life around him was like a nightmare. And one day, he was alone. His wife was very sad. A lot of tears in this house, house of a pastor, because the pastor was full with hate, you know? Full with hate. He, want, he, he wanted the revenge. He wanted that the guy who was beating his son uh, uh, dying. He wanted, it, it, it was his desire. And one day the Lord told to this pastor, everything was de destroyed in his heart, in his minister, in his family. And the Lord said to him, my son, if you want to see the glory, my glory in your life, you must to forgive. You must forgive the men who want to kill your son. It's impossible. You must. If you want to see my glory, you will destroy everything around you if you don't stop now. You must to hold the stone. And this pastor, because he was a man of God, he did accept. He went to his wife and he told her, My wife, I beg your pardon. I apologize. I don't realize what I do. Forgive me, my, my wife. And he go to the church. And in front of all the community, all, all the church, he asked the, 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 the forgiveness. He, 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 he told to the church, I beg your pardon also. I was so sad. I was in the darkness. But I want the will of God. I want to see the glory of the Lord. And when he finished that, he told to his wife, to, to his wife, would you, would you come with me to the hospital? We know we want, I want to see our son. And when with his wife, he said to me, when, with his wife, he went to the hospital. The young boy was uh, ever in the same situation. He was uh, lay upon the bed in uh, very, very, very bad. He, he can just move the two fingers and the pastor said to his son, my son, the Lord uh, 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 talking to me and he asked me to forgive the man who want to kill you. And you know, my son, if, if you are hungry, you, you, will, uh, you will do some things and if you are not hungry, you do nothing. He said, I, I have decided to forgive the man who want to kill you. Because the Lord asked me to do that. What do you do? What, what, what do you want? What do you what do you see? He can answer. But at the at this time, he he, he took the, the end of the of his father. And uh, the father realized his son was angry with him. And at this time, he started to pray with his uh, his wife. He said to his wife, can we pray together for our son? We will ask the Lord to do something for him now. And together, the pastor and his wife, they, they have chosen to forgive the, the people who want to kill them boy. And they are starting to, to pray. And when they are starting to pray, the young boy is starting to move his hand. The sudden hand. He stood up. He started to speak with his father and in this uh, room of the hospital they have seen the glory of the Lord. The young boy, the young boy uh, 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 said to, to, to his father, you know father, when the first guy bite me with uh, his, uh, his hand, with uh, his, uh, his foot, I, I cry in my heart, in my soul, I forgive you, I forgive you. And they have seen the glory of the Lord in this day. So I want to tell you, I will finish now. This is a great reality in your life and in my life. If we want to see the glory of the Lord, 
You know, every time we say, me and my brothers, the pastors and the Christians, we say, the Lord is almighty. He can do the great things. He's able to bless our family. He's able to change everything around us. Yes, we believe that. Yes. But uh, how many stones? Sometimes I say, hey, stop the blessing of God. I will finish. I'm sorry. My glasses. I write, would you like to see the glory of the Lord? Amen. I ask you the question. Amen. 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 Yes, we would. Yes, we, we want. Would you like to see the glory of the Lord? So, so, take the decision to roll away the stone, to take away, to remove. Would you like to roll away the stone off? I, I, I write a, 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 a small list. The stone of the weakness. Weakness. It's possible in Christian life. The, the Lord doesn't want, but it's possible. I don't have time, I'm sorry. It's too late, maybe. It's okay. It's okay. If I have time, I, I want just after to, to, to share with you a, a, a last testimony, very important. The wickedness. We must do all this kind of stone. The revenge. The revenge. The revenge is very important. We must do to, to, to hold the unforgiveness. I write the forgiveness. This is this is not a feeling, this is a choice. You must realize. Sometimes you can say, but yes, but I cannot to love this kind of people. It's impossible. No, I want to tell you. The forgiveness of God is not a feeling, this is a choice. Amen. You can say today, oh Lord, yes, I want to remove this stone of the unforgiveness. I will to choose to forgive everybody around me. I can by myself, but I trust in you. And I want to take the decision today to to, to hold this, this stone. Would you like to hold the stone of the hunger? Hunger. The stone of hate. Badness. The stone of jealousy. The stone of spiritual laziness. Very important. The stone of spiritual laziness. The stone of, I return, your bad temper. Character. It's good character. Do you understand? Amen. The bad character we are. Amen. We must remove. I write also, we must remove that all what we, what we know don't please to God. We know sometimes, we are in our lives many things we don't please to God. We know that, but we want to keep. We want to, uh, to, to hide. But the Lord said today, if you want to see the glory of the Lord, you must do the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit to show you, to show me. You know when a pastor preach, he don't preach. Uh, 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 he doesn't preach a lot uh, 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 just for the people in front of him. But the first people, uh, uh, when a pastor preach, uh, uh, he preach. He says, "It is him." I preach for me today also. You know, let the Holy Spirit to show you an accent. Maybe it is now just like a gravel. Yeah, very important. Sometimes this is a big stone. Like the stone uh, uh, beside the town, in front of the town. But sometimes this is maybe just a little gravel. But I, I, I wrote, you know, maybe it's now just a little gravel, like a little gravel. But in the shoe, it hurts. It's true. In the shoe, it hurts a little gravel. And sometimes this is not a big stone, but we know in our heart. Let the Holy Spirit show how life now. I want to tell you this, uh, to show you just uh, the, this uh, last testimony. It, it is a testimony of a Christian lady. Uh, one day, I will finish, I promise you. One day, a pastor uh, came to a church. He was not from this, uh, this church. And uh, he, he spread the word of God. And when he had finished to preach, one Christian lady uh, came to him and she asked him, uh, Brother, would you like to pray for my husband? He is no Christian, and I have the desire he, he will be saved. Can you pray for him? It's good. 
It's normal. And the pastor was crushed by, by the Holy Spirit and he started to, to say that, okay sister, I will pray for you, for your husband, for your family, okay. Can you tell me the name of your husband? What's his name? And uh, she replied, I don't remember the name, so I, I, I won't now use uh, Irish name. Patrick, okay? Patrick, maybe. Yes, his name? Patrick. Okay, Patrick. Your husband called Patrick, okay. And you? In your household, in your family at home, how do you, do you call him? What's the name you, you, you use? You know, in our household, we don't use all the time the same, the same one to call uh, our wife or our, our husband. Michael Math, you, what's the name of your, of your wife at home? A secret? No, yes, it's a secret. Sometimes, my love, my beloved, my baby, you know, it's possible. And the pastor uh, uh, asked to, 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 to this lady, what's the name of your husband at home? And she replied, his name? Patrick. His name is Patrick. I call him Patrick. Okay, you call him Patrick. Okay. And what what he like to eat, your husband? It was very strange because they asked him just to pray for the salvation of a husband. And he asked, he asked her, but tell me, what's he like to eat your husband? She replied, I don't know what, she, what, what he likes. What, what you do for him when he come back from the, the, the war? What, what he, he likes? And she replied, oh, pastor, you don't understand. I'm saved, I'm a Christian. I don't ask you to pray for me, but to pray for my husband. I have no problem. And the, 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 the pastor, pushed by the Holy Spirit, realized the problem in this household, in this family, was this woman. How you call your, your husband? I call him Patrick, okay. What do I do eat? He eat what I do. He eat what I do. I, I, I do for him uh, some food, he eat. And the pastor tell to, he told to this, to, to this lady, you must to change in your family. If you want to see the glory of the Lord, if you want your, your, your husband will save, you must to change. Change uh, 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 the relationship you have with your husband and you will see. And she was very hungry. She, she didn't accept. She, she went back out of the church and she, she, she shut the door. She was very angry against the pastor. He is crazy, this pastor. I'm not the problem. This is my husband, the problem. But when she came at home, when she was alone, because she was a Christian, when she was alone, she realized, she, she reminded the word of the pastor, how you call your husband. What, what you do for him, some food. And one day, at morning, uh, uh, his husband was at, at work, he, he worked in the office. She called him by phone. Hello? The answer, yes, hello? Who is? She said, hello? Uh, maybe, I, I don't know the, the word in, in Irish, you will tell me. She said, she said, baby, my sherry? He said, oh, why you call me my sherry, my baby? Why you, do, why you tell that? Is there a problem at home? Maybe, maybe you, uh, maybe you like the fire in, in our house. Maybe you have an accident. Yes, true, I promise you. It was a testimony. What's the problem at home? What, what are you doing? She replied, no. I, 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 do, I do nothing. But I just want to know what you want to eat tonight. He, 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 he said, okay, I arrive right now. What now? What now? I arrive now. No. He, it's too strange. He came back to his home and everything was good. But they, they took the decision to change in his household. And you know what? You know what's happening? Just, uh, just a few times later, his husband, uh, her husband, sorry, her husband, never in the past go to the church. He, he go with her to the church and a few days later, he gave his heart to Jesus and he was saved. She was the stone in 
is a whole family. We must to change, you know. We must to take a decision this morning, and I will finish. We can bow our head. Just to tell you that, maybe this morning, this afternoon, maybe you can say yourself, "Okay, Steve, I understand. I'm not crazy. I have many, or maybe just one, or maybe many stones in your life." Maybe just a little brother in your show, but I want to tell you that this morning, this afternoon, sorry. Maybe you can say yourself, okay Steve, I accept, I recognize, I need to change, I need to, to remove the stone, I need to take away the stone, okay, okay. But Steve, I can't, I can't, I'm not able, I'm sorry, I have not the desire, I'm not able to forgive. I'm not able to change my character. It's uh, too hard. I can't change. I want to tell you just to finish. We bow our, ne our head now in the book of Mark, chapter 16 and verse 3. It is written when the ladies came on the Sunday morning at the tomb of, at the tomb of Jesus, when he rose again, they asked in themselves, how, how can we roll the stone? Because the stone was too big for them. But they had the desire to see Jesus. They want to roll the stone. They, they didn't know how they can do. But they go to the town. And when they arrive, it is written. The Lord did the miracle. The stone rolled by herself. And the Lord is able this afternoon. If you want to see the glory of the Lord in your life and your family around you, if you want uh, to see the, 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 your family rebuilt upon the ruins, if you want to see the, 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 the glory, if you want your situation change, it's possible. But you must take a decision now. What you want? Just to go to the church? Just to know the Bible? It's good to know the Bible. The knowledge is very good. But what we need is to, to see the power of God in our life. We see the glory of the Lord, but today we must take a decision. And if you are not able, I promise you, He will help you. He will ward all the stone you can ward. Pray the Lord together now. I will ask Jimmy to pray. Jimmy, stand up please and pray for everyone. Pray together. Oh Lord, we understand, we understood your, your word. And sometimes we have many stones we, we must to, to remove. We, we, we must to do our part. And through your work today, you are able to, to touch our heart and to show us what we what the decision we must do to have. And if you want, we take away some things from our heart. Give us the strength to do that. Because through your word, this afternoon, this is the Holy Spirit who, who, who spoke to our heart. Yes. And we, we must uh, have a reaction now. Oh please, my, my, my God. May, may the good decision uh, uh, in, in the heart of everyone now. We want to make we want to make our part for the, the things we change. Bless everybody, brothers and sisters, now in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. Thanks to God.